Okay. Okay, now that we've got all of our patchwork done on our wings, got the tips all done, both of them, we are ready to start putting them together. So, uh, this is the left wing. Just make sure you have the left aileron that goes with it. it all, all the colors and stripes line up. So, anyway, the first thing you want to do is take a hobby knife. And I, I prefer to use a little bit duller one on this. So you, it was a real sharp one, you're liable to just slice all the way through it, but your little grooves uh, where your hinges go, they come cut out from the factory, but you need to hollow them out a little bit. You'll, you'll never get your hinges in there good, so stick your knife in there, being careful not to cut your fingers off, but just uh, slide it back and forth, keep it you know, straight in, don't angle it, slide it back and forth a few times in each hole, and then that will... Uh, where was it on my mark? Let me mark it right quick. That will let your hinges go in real easy, and you push them into the mark. We'll go to that later, but uh, just get all your holes swallowed out good on your control surface and the wing. You gotta do both sides, and then always test fit your hinges. Don't just put put them in there and put glue on them. Uh, Make sure everything's going to line up good and your spaces are good. I've had kits that come out that these holes were off center. And which what would happen is it would leave your aileron sticking up. The level of the aileron is higher than the surface of the wing and then vice versa on the other side. Well, that's going to throw off a little bit. Bill, matter of fact, Bill has a Zen 50 from Nitro Planes. It was a very poor quality plane. But uh, anyway, we built it and flew it anyway. But his are like that. We need to cut his hinges off, redo the holes, and get it squared up with the wing because it's it's setting up an eighth of an inch almost above the surface of the wing. So I'm sure that doesn't help the flight characteristics of it. But anyway, get all your holes buzzed out, or not buzzed out, but cleaned out with a knife. Don't cut your fingers off. I'm using a sharp one there. I need to use my dull one. Uh, there we go. Get all those done. And... When I get these cleaned out, I will be back and we'll put the hinges in. Okay, um, we've got our hinges marked in the center with this little pencil mark. And it doesn't matter which side you start with, the control surface or the wing, either one. But use the, put your hands right in the middle of the slot. Try to get it centered in the, in the middle. Push it into your mark that you have on your hinge. That way you know you got halfway on either side. You don't want to, you know, a light end. A short end on one end, it, it could come loose. So uh, push them into that. Now, uh, T pins. I have a couple different sizes on this particular size plane. I like the smaller ones. Uh, you take that and push that through right in front of your, right in your mark, in front of your control surface here, the aileron. That way, when you push it up into the wing, it doesn't push those hinges back into here. So that will keep them even. So we'll put them in there. And uh, now at this point, we've got them all pinned. We're going to test fit this and make sure that they're all going to go in and line up. Start with one end and just kind of work your way down and start them into the holes. Just thread them, feed them in there. All right, once you get them started, then push them all the way in against your pins. All right, slide your aileron back and forth, whichever way you need to go, to make sure that you have clearance from your wing surface. You don't want that binding touching right here or on the other end, so make sure you got good clearance. Now, at this point, be sure they're pushed in all the way to the pins. Sometimes you'll get a little spring on one end, uh, if you do, just do that hinge first, or down a couple, and then push the other end in. And once you get that seated to where you're happy with it, um, we're going to pull these pins out. Okay? Now, I've got a little spring on this far end, so what I'm going to do is glue this in first. Now, be careful not to let your glue run everywhere, but if you put it right in there uh, on top of that hinge, don't, don't wiggle your aileron at this time. Uh, just put your tip, you need some fine tips to put on your glue bottles, but use thin CA. Put that down there, put about six to eight drops on that hinge. And that you can watch that glue just wick up inside there. 
All right, now at this point, I'm gonna pull these last two pins out and I'm gonna push this end in where I had my little spring and I'm gonna do it. I got good clearance on both ends. One, two, three, four. I usually do about eight drops. Watch it wick in. All right, we got the two end ones. Now we're gonna do the two middle ones. At this point, you can pull it just a little bit to get in there to your hinge. And if you have to, wiggle it just a little bit up and down to, to get it to wick into your hinge. Uh, if you do get glue on your wing, you got to be quick. Get a, a wet paper towel or, or some alcohol on it and try to wipe it off real quick before it sets because it will leave a ugly little white spot. Alright, we've done the top surface. Uh, this stuff sets real quick. Now we're going to turn the wing over and do the same thing on all four of them uh, across the bottom. Six, eight drops again. You can watch it just wick in there. Suck right up into that hinge. One more drop there. Okay. Now I'll put my, I use a T-pin to plug my little tip. These little tips I get, I'm kind of fortunate. You can buy fine tip at the hobby shops. They're kind of high, you know, because you, you, you go through a lot of them, but uh, I'm in the dental business. I work. I'm a dental technician in a dental lab. So in our clinic, they get tons of these little tips. They got threads on the end, and I just cut the old tip, off, the main tip, off the bottle and thread it right in there. So I can change it anytime it plugs up. I got drawers full of them. They don't use them with whatever syringes they come with, so they give them to me. Uh, but they're awesome. I, I have just tons of them, and, and like I said, I just cut the main tip off this bottle with a razor knife, and it leaves a perfect size hole. That those just thread right down in there. So, and I use a T-pin to plug them. But for you guys that aren't fortunate enough to have that option, you can you can get them at hobby shops and stuff. So, all right, we've got this one hinged. Now, after it sets a minute, wiggle it back and forth, make sure nothing's binding. You're ready to go. All right, we will do the other one and be back in just a minute. Okay, uh, one thing on these hinges, and depending on the builder, everybody builds a little bit different. Um, and it, you know, it just you just want to make sure it works. But some people say that you have to split a slice down the center of this. Some of them even come like that for the glue to wick in. Some some people say that you have to take a drill bit and drill a hole right in the center of this or it won't wick in. That's not true. Uh, I've built an upwards of 80 planes in the last five years and I have never drilled a hole in them. I've never had to slit these and I've never had a hinge come loose not one single time. So that, that glue, once it hit, as long as you can see it down in there between your gap and you get that glue on it, it wicks in there like a like a wick in a, in a lantern. I mean it just soaks up. So unless you just want to, you can drill the holes like some people say but it's unnecessary. You really don't have to. To me, it just you're taking more of the wood structure out and weakening it because it flows in there. And like I said, I've built 80 something planes and never had one even begin to come loose. So anyway, you can uh, you know take some tips from whoever and do however you want to do it. But this is the way I do mine, and they work good. Okay, we've got our ailerons uh, CA hinged in. Uh, one thing, the main thing on these is. is when I'm showing you how to push these up against there, you don't want any gap that air can get in. If you have, I mean, you can have a little bitty gap and it's not going to hurt anything, especially on a plane this size. But if you have a very large gap at all, then you're going to have to seal these hinges with some covering and you have to take a piece and put over one side and iron it down in there and keep the air from getting. You get too much of a gap and you get a bunch of air in there, it's going to cause that aileron to flutter real bad like that in the air and it can cause one to come off and when you lose an aileron you're, you're going to lose your plane so now on your larger planes you, you get up bigger you you may want to get away from the CA hinges they use usually most of the kits come with nice either heavy plastic or metal uh, hinges on their giant and especially the giant scale so but you know what we're concentrating on here is 40 60 size that we're building so anyway alright we will move on to gluing the wing together be back in a moment okay uh, Actually, we're not going to glue the wing together yet. <laughs> we're going to put the servos in the wing. And when you get your servos out of the box, uh, first of all, what I'm using on this plane, it's a 40 size plane. We're going to be running a 55AX by OS uh, engine on it. 
which builds, screams about 85 to 87 miles an hour, and I love that thing. Uh, anyway, I'm using high tech uh, HS 425 dual ball bearings. Uh, they're good little servos. They are at uh, 4.8 volt, they're 46 ounce torque, but at 6 volt, they're 57 ounce torque. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this plane calls for 50 ounce servos. So 57 is plenty to fly it. We've not had any problems with bills. Uh, they're really good little servos. Uh, we actually get a good deal on them. We get them from a guy off of eBay. It sells their brand new in the box, but if you buy a case of them of 20, uh, I think it's a hundred and I want to say $155 and $18 freight. Anyway, it comes out like $8.63 a piece. These are $14 servos at most hobby shops. You can get them at uh, Todd'sModels.com for $11.99. It's the cheapest place that I know of you can get them, but other than eBay. But uh, they're good little servos. They work great for these 40 size planes. I've even used a few of them in a 60 size, like, you know, a Cub or something like that. It doesn't need a lot of torque, but. Great little servos. We've not had any problems with them. We use a ton of them. So, anyway, when you get it out of the box, you're gonna get your bag, a little bag of hardware. You got your little rubber grommets. The, the, there's a flat side and a round side. The round side goes to the back of your servo. So be sure you get that right. It won't go in there good. Snap those into place. And uh, they usually go in real easy. All right. Then you got four little brass uh, eyes those go in from the bottom not the top a lot of people think they go in from the top for the screw to rest against that they don't your screws have a built-on washer on them that supports the top part what that's for if you put this in the top the bottom sharp edge if you tor torque it down enough can squeeze through and it will cut grooves in your wood and loosen your servo up in time so what you want to do is put these in from the bottom and the reason for that is because the little flare on the bottom keeps that from cutting into the wood it actually supports it and squeezes down against that so you have the little flare on that on the bottom and the flare on the uh, screw on the top so always put them in from the bottom not the top alright next thing you got uh, several different servo horns you got the big fat red one you got uh, the small four way and you got the two sided one which is slightly longer and that's normally what I use on these 40 size planes there is an adjustable one here that you can use and it goes together like that and then you can adjust your screw and, and lengthen it and that'll get your maximum length if you're going into some kind of 3D then you need that longer arm to get heavy throws on your control surfaces so we just want fairly normal dual rates on this so what we're going to do is use uh, the dual arm but we are going to uh, cut the one side of it off because all you need is, is one arm for your uh, rudder and one for your elevator so and then the rest of this stuff I just keep it I have a little box in here I have tons of extra servo horns and you know you never know when you're going to need more of them uh, it comes with a round one on here. You can use the round one, but I, like I said, I like that that one there. Um, let's take this off. We'll temporarily stick this on here for now, but we're going to have to remove it in a little while to square it up. We get a receiver hooked up to this thing, and we want a 90 degree on it. So anyway, that's where we'll start. Okay, um, if anybody's interested in these uh, high-tech 425 dual ball bearing servos, the place we get them, like I said, they're... They're, uh, I believe, 12 or 13.99 at most hobby shops, or 11.99 at Todd'sModels.com. But if you buy these from this guy, buy the case. They're brand new in the box. We bought like six cases of them between three of us, and we have not had any problems with them. They're great. Uh, you get 20 to a case, and at uh, 155 with 18 dollars shipping. If you buy two cases, he'll he'll do the same shipping on both boxes just 18 so you can save a little money there that's what we do Bill and I we get together and we'll order two cases at a time a lot of times but anyway here's the information uh, it is evergreen sale 74 uh, E V E R G R E E N S A L E 74 you can get on eBay type that in and it will pull up his site 
and there's the price, uh, 155 for a case of 20 and $18 shipping. Uh, he doesn't, most of the time he has them in stock, every now and then you'll pull it up and he'll be out. But just give him about a week and, and he'll have them back on there. Or you can email him and uh, ask him when he'll have them and he'll tell you. He's a real nice guy. We bought, like I said, six or seven cases from him. Not had a single problem with any of them. Uh, anyway, there they are if anybody's interested. Where we'll start. And then on your wing, most of them come like this. They're covered over the top, but you can see the hole. Of course, your manual will show you where it's at. Uh, you just take a, a nice sharp razor knife and slice right along the edge. Uh, some people will leave a sixteenth of an inch of that covering and iron it down inside there. I personally have never had any problem with it coming loose, so I don't uh, don't waste the time. Get a hold of it here. Let me turn this around. We'll cut the last side of it. And there again, you have a nice little piece for a patch if you have a little pinhole or something. Put that in your drawer or wherever you keep your extra stuff and uh, good to go. All right.